So in this channel, I've told you about how before I became the owner of an award-winning bakery, I actually had no idea what I was doing in the kitchen, and there were a lot of disasters along the way. But I've never actually shown you what that looked like. Partly because it was a huge train wreck, and I'm a little embarrassed of some of the things, but today, we're doing it. Today, we're looking back at some of my most infamous, terrible kitchen disasters and what I learned from them. And the reason why we're doing this and that I'm sharing all of this dirty laundry with you guys is so that, first of all, you know that you are not alone in any of your disasters. And second, so that you too can learn from your mistakes and hopefully avoid some of these disasters maybe. Let's just get into it. Are you ready? Let's do this. And if you're new around here, hi, I'm Natalia Lima, founder and owner of Curious Cat Bakery, an all-vegan, award-winning bakery where everything tastes just as good or better than the real deal. But like I said, that was not always the case. Once upon a time, I was just a clueless vegan, not knowing what in the world I was doing in the kitchen and eating a lot of really bad dry vegan cake. Now that I've cracked the code on vegan baking, this is the place where I share all my tips, hacks, and recipes, so make sure you hit the subscribe button if that's something you're into. I also have a beginner's guide to vegan baking, so make sure you sign up for that. It's totally free, and I share my top 10 tips for anyone getting started, the kind of tips that I wish somebody had given me and saved me a whole lot of headache and crying in the kitchen. Speaking of which, let's get to those disasters, shall we? I'm gonna have to look these up on my phone because I have them all saved in a folder called disasters. Okay, so first up, April 3rd, 2016. Look at this beauty. This was my attempt at making a carrot cake in less time than I had. Now, this cake obviously did not turn out as it was supposed to. Judging by the color, I think what I was trying to make was my Brazilian carrot cakes. It's actually my favorite type of cake. Let me know in the comments if you want me to share that recipe in here. Believe me, it's been improved now. It doesn't look like that anymore, it looks like this. We've come a long way. What happened here, I just thought, if I crank up that temperature, we can get this cake done in less time. That's not how it works. Outside of it, cooked fast because it was really hot in that oven in the inside did not have time to keep up so that middle was still raw if i had kept it in the oven for longer what would have happened is that the outside would have burned to a crisp and the inside maybe would have gotten there but then i still wouldn't have been able to eat it so a couple of lessons learned here one the time for baking is what it is you can't rush it you are on baking time you just have to accept it and go with it. So if you put the temperature higher trying to rush the process, this is the result. It's not gonna work. The outside is gonna burn and the inside is gonna be raw. You need a temperature that's gonna allow both the outside and the inside to cook slowly and get there together as a team. Whatever the temperature and the baking time in your recipe, trust. And also a second thing, actually we'll get to that later. Stick around to the end of the video for that second lesson because I think it's going to apply to pretty much all of the disasters. Second disaster, and this one is what comes to mind when I think of my worst disasters. This picture instantly flashes in my brain. I was already a professional when I was doing this. So just keep that in mind if you ever made a cake that came out looking less than perfect. But here's what happened with this cake. Somebody ordered a cake for their daughter's birthday and they told me it was going to be a pink polka dot party. Great. Now at the time I was still making cakes at the bakery and I had a very signature style for all of my cakes which was a rustic kind of semi-naked look on buttercream with a crescent moon of flowers. That was my signature look for the Curious Cat Bakery cake. If you want to know why I don't make cakes at the bakery anymore, there's a video on that. I'll put the link in the description below. Either way, that's what all the cakes look like and what I was planning to do. I made the cake, but then... So sometimes when you bake a cake, you know, you get that like dome look on top and you need to flatten it. You need to cut that top of it. But I didn't wait for the cake to cool enough before I leveled it. So it started to crack. In my mind, I just thought, you know what? It's a little bit cracked. But by the time I put the buttercream on it, it will stay together. Spoiler alert, it did not stay together. A valuable lesson that I learned here is that there is no amount of buttercream that will hold your cake together if it starts to crack. You're better off just starting over. Those cracks are significant. The whole thing will fall apart no matter how much buttercream you throw on top of it. And in the end, you're just gonna have cake crumbles. 
but clearly this is not where all the troubles were, okay? Not only did I put a whole bunch of buttercream in there, hoping that it would hold the cake together, once I put all of it in there, I thought to myself, she did say it was pink polka dots for the whole party. I wonder if by chance, without any training whatsoever overnight, I have magically learned how to do a polka dot cake that looks amazing. I just decided to put white buttercream in a piping bag and decided to start doing polka dots all over the cake. When I was doing the polka dots, I was like lifting the piping bag and then it was doing a little poop on top. And then of course it was less polka dot and more pimply cake. It was hideous. That thing was an atrocity. So it was kind of good that after 20 minutes of letting it sit on the counter where I was just like, what have I done? It started to fall apart. As if the universe was saying, you cannot present this cake. This is the most hideous thing in the world. Let me make this easier for you. I'm gonna make it all fall apart. I had to start from scratch and make the whole cake again. This time I waited until the cake was cool until I leveled it. And I did not try to experiment with new decorating techniques the day before the cake was due. This was the result. It was a beautiful cake. They absolutely loved it. And two valuable lessons were learned that day. I will never do any of those ever, ever again. Now let's go further back to 2018. This one is really fun because I legit thought I was going to die. Like I was in shock after it happened. This was my first time trying to make bread. Clearly a winning first attempt, which is hilarious when you think about the fact that today I make a living out of selling bread. The most complicated bread to make, which is croissants. I use Paul Hollywood's book that is one of my favorites for learning how to bake. I actually have a whole video with my favorite books for beginner bakers. I'll link it in the description below. It's this one right here. This result here has nothing to do with the book. This was all human error. So here's what happened. I was making just the first recipe in the book, which is just your plain white bread. You do the dough, you do everything. And then when you're ready to bake the bread, you're supposed to put some water in a baking tray on the bottom rack of the oven. So that creates steam. And then you get that crusty, nice, crunchy bite of the outside of the bread and on the inside it's soft. And at the time I was still getting into the groove of baking and I was doing more cooking than baking. And for cooking I used that like a glass cooking tray or baking tray. So the instructions were to put a baking pan in the bottom rack of the oven and then crank it up to like 450 or something like that. It was a really high temperature. And then when you're ready to put the bread in there to bake, you're supposed to just pour some water into that hot tray because immediately it's going to create steam. All right, no problem. So I put that baking tray in the bottom rack of the oven. When I was ready to put the bread in, I poured some cold water into that really, really hot glass baking pan. Before I knew what happened, that thing exploded into a thousand pieces. And they were big glass pieces too. I was just like looking down and I was like, am I bleeding? Because immediately my anxiety was like, you probably have a huge piece of glass sticking out of your stomach right now and you're gonna bleed to death. Having anxiety is so much fun. No, I'm not bleeding, okay? Then what just happened? It took so much cleaning around the kitchen. Weeks after I was still finding little pieces of glass. It was a nightmare. I was fine, I survived it, but a valuable, most important lesson was learned and that is you cannot use a glass baking tray when baking at a high temperature you just can't it's a bad idea so only metal trays going forward that one you only learn once though you don't go back from that you don't try that twice like you learn that once and you learn it fast forward to last year when i was already a professional for a couple of years and i had a whole new challenge to deal with with bread it was my croissants. Basically, all of a sudden, a recipe that was tried and true and had been working wonderfully for a long time just stopped working. Croissants were falling apart, wouldn't come together, the butter was leaking everywhere, and I had orders to fill and restaurants to supply. I actually have a whole video explaining what happened, how I dealt with it, and how you can fix a recipe that's no longer working all of a sudden. It's this one over here. I'll put the link in the description below because that one deserves its own time. 
because it was a doozy but all is well now the croissants have been fixed okay now let's do a little speed round to wrap this whole thing up so this one macarons oh yeah I did vegan macarons for a while at the bakery and I stopped doing it because macarons are really hard to do okay just plain macarons are really hard to do vegan macarons are super duper hard to do. I say that macarons are the type of thing where like a butterfly flaps its wings in Russia and your macarons don't come out right that day. They are unpredictable, fickle creatures. Any little change in the air or humidity affects them. What I learned from these disasters of macarons is that disasters of macarons are very, very common. I was not doing anything specifically wrong. They're really, really hard and unpredictable and that is just the truth. This one, the soggiest of bottoms. So this was actually from the Great British Baking Show Vegan Challenge that I did for the first year where I veganized all the recipes from the Great British Baking Show. This was supposed to be a tart to ten and it was supposed to have like layers. So this was my first attempt at puff pastry. Clearly it did not go well. All of that butter leaked out. It was just like a solid mush of dough with some stuff sitting on top. It took me three tries to get that better and the lesson learned was that when you're doing puff pastry your butter has to be cold. Very very cold and you need to keep the dough cold all the time. It's a process. You have to do it quickly, you have to do it efficiently because that butter needs to stay cold. Learn that after three tries. Now in the end, I did get it to come out right. This is what it looked like in the end. It was delicious. And that recipe is in the ebook that I published with all of those recipes. I'll put the link in the description below if you wanna get that. And then to finalize, look at this cupcake. It looks like the poop emoji. Yeah, it's hideous, it's hideous. And I thought it was nice enough to take a picture of. I don't know if this is like a sarcastic picture that I'm looking at it like that, or if I thought it looked good at the time, I, I honestly don't remember. Either way, we can all agree now that it's hideous. And the lesson learned here is that piping tips are a must. At that time, I was still using just like a Ziploc bag that I would cut a hole into it as a piping bag. I was still trying to figure out if I wanted to get into baking or not. And I didn't want to spend the, what, $13 that it costs for a set of piping tips. You can buy one piping tip for like $2 at Michael's. Either way, I didn't want to spend that money, so I was just making a hole into a Ziploc bag and piping. Clearly, piping tips are a must. Lesson learned. Now these are just a little tiny fraction of all of my disasters that I've had in the kitchen. These are just the ones that I had the wherewithal to stop crying and take a picture of to try to remember how ridiculous that situation was. And I'm glad that I did that. So I encourage you whenever you have a disaster in the kitchen, it's okay, cry it out, get frustrated, toss the things in the sink, but then have a moment where you take a picture of it and save it in an album in your phone that's called Disasters. Because one day you're gonna look back at that photo and you're gonna be so freaking proud of yourself for how far you've come. And remember back at the top where I said stay tuned to the end of the video for one more lesson? Here's the lesson that applies to all of these disasters. No matter how bad of a disaster you've made in the kitchen, you screw up, you clean up, you learn, you get better. It's just the way that things are. Baking is a messy sport, and yes, there's going to be disasters along the way. It's okay to get frustrated, but you always recover from it. And if you actually take this as an opportunity to learn from it, you will learn from it and you will grow and you will grow as a baker. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It will signify to YouTube that there's some actual good information in here and it will share with others in the algorithm. Now, if you're ready to leave those disaster days behind you, make sure you check out this playlist. My Vegan Baking for Beginners playlist has all of the information that you need to get you started with vegan baking on the right foot. And in this playlist over here, I share some pep talks on the right mindset when it comes to baking. So this will probably be very helpful to you too. I will talk to you guys next week. Until then, stay curious.